This is probably the ultimate beginner tutorial to Electron workflow and the Digitag in particular, but it's also very lengthy. So let me just start off by saying that the video is split into two parts. In the first part, we go over all the basics that you need to know in order to operate at Digitag, but also to understand the more general Electron workflow. Now in the second part, my co-hosts Felix and Steven, they get their own Digitacts and they put their newly acquired knowledge to the test and, and get really practical. So be sure to check the description for timestamps depending on what you want to learn and depending on where you are in your learning process. And if you like these kind of in-depth tutorials, please consider going to patreon.com slash bowbeats, check it out, become a member. It really supports what I'm doing here with these tutorial videos. So thank you so much for considering that. Now let's get into today's tutorial. Hello there and welcome to another Bo Beats video with me Bo and today I'm joined by Noir at Blank V also known as or named Steven. Was that awkward? Hello! <laughs> Hello everyone! And you guys probably know him already and this is Felix from Tuesday Night Machines. Right, exactly. I got that right Hello. too. Hello! Yeah. Cool! And of course their channels will be linked down below. Two, two of the fine gentlemen that I've been yeah, fortunate enough to, to hang out with for mm -hmm. this event. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Oh yeah, thanks for having us. Today we are just going to do a very basic introduction of like electron workflow so that you at home could kind of follow along what's going on and we're going to try and take it like as basic as, as humanly possible yeah. and slow. So you guys have to kind of, you know, I'm a kind of rambler, you know, a teacher, I like to talk. So you have to stop me if there's something you don't get or something you want to know. You are both like novices, you would say, on, on the Electron stuff? I've never made something at all on an Electron. I've touched it, that's as far as it goes. You touched it and, and then you got afraid uh, and you were backed up. Uh, there's so many numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, yeah, for those who don't know, you're, you're more of a, you're, you're a keyboard, you're a skilled keyboard player, so you, you're big on those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, it's just intimidating, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. it's intimidating yeah. for me personally to, to try something that I haven't tried, and, and and so, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, and how about you, Felix? Uh, well, I've had an Octatrack mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. like I mean four months maybe, mm -hmm. um, like way back though, and yeah, it's it was difficult to set it up for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Once it worked, it was great. It was a really yeah. awesome experience. But then I took a break for two weeks, forgot everything how it worked, and had yeah. to set up everything yeah. again and again and again. And yeah, I had to get rid of it because it wasn't. The right mm. fit somehow. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But I know people love these things from Electron, so I'm really happy that we've got you here to <laughs> tell <laughs> us more about it. Yeah, hopefully I can I can show show you some stuff. So we got the Digitac here, uh, pretty much like the the, I think it's like one of the better entry machines. Okay. So just to give you the the kind of rundown here, we have uh, yeah we have uh, eight channels for samples. It's oh, okay. So it's mono samples. So here we're kind of. We're not in a particular deep menu or anything. Okay. We're like in the basic state. So eight, the uh, upper row here is eight sample channels. And then the lower ones are MIDI channels. Okay. So it's, but um, eight voice polyphonic. So we can play those eight channels at the same yeah. time? Yeah. All right. So each channel is monophonic, but it's okay. eight channels. Right. Okay. Yeah. So for example. This is just a... This Sounds is just, good. Yeah, basic kit of samples. And you can sample into it. So you have a sampling button over here. Oh, that's... Yeah. So if I if I pre press function and uh, yes here, it starts recording. Uh, wh where is it recording from? It's recording from the... Im uh, well, yeah, it's, it, now it's the source is the external oh, I input. See. So you okay. can select that. So uh, let's see here, normalizing. So now, well, we, we, don't, have to li we, yeah, oh. we don't have to listen to it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so, no, so now we, we, you could save this, for example, or you could just discard it. So f yeah, function yes. I think this is so funny with the electron gear that it's, you know, the yes and no buttons. Yeah. And it's not like, okay, it's yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot of, that, that's another thing. Like there, a lot of the features are hidden with mm -hmm. function commands. So you see the um, orange here mm -hmm. is symbolic. So. When you see oh, something, okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. So if you want to say, say you want to quantize something, you just uh, function yeah. and trig because function trig is quantize. Right. So then you see the quantization menu, and I could just mention that you can do track quantization 
and or global mm -hmm. quantization okay. as well. So let's just start with like, we want to load, you know, it's a sampler, so we want to load a sample. Um, so you basically, you go in here to, yeah, the, the this is like the little cogwheel. Mm -hmm. And here we have uh, different, yeah, different settings. So you have project settings for the, the project is the top level. So you're always working from a project. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. So, so a project is the collection of patterns, uh, okay. the banks, the patterns that you got going, the samples, or rather the the yeah the saved states for the current samples that you're using in that project. So it's it's everything contained that you created for something. That's a project. It's all of the yeah not not actual samples because they are oh. yeah the actual samples are well I'm not too sure exactly. Uh, I think some stuff might... And I'm cutting myself off here because I really wanted to get this right so everybody knows what's going on. Basically, when you load a project, you load samples from the plus drive, the little quote-unquote hard drive in the unit, into uh, the active RAM. So when you change stuff, the settings are saved with the project, but the samples are always located on the plus drive and then loaded into the RAM of the project project okay. and the patterns and, and that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and also, also of course, um, uh, certain certain configurations, is uh, MIDI configs and stuff is of course saved with the project as well. So okay. say you have a project that you use to do, um, yeah, you want to hook it up to other stuff, mm -hmm. you might use one project for that. And when you want to use it standalone, you might use one project. For okay. that, because it's made my so you can make yourself like preset projects for certain use yeah, cases, certain sure. configurations. Sure. Okay. If we go into samples, uh, we go into factory. Here you can see just different folders. Mm -hmm. you can you know sure. you can rename whatever. So we have drums here, for example. Different, uh, just different folders, very basic structure. So let's listen to a few. And here's another thing. So this is just a folder mm -hmm. with samples. So if we hit this little here, right key, mm -hmm. we get a menu. And okay. on the menu you can see select all, deselect all, and so on. So there's kind of quick functions. So we, sure. can, we can select all, eight samples selected. And now we select load to project. Yes. So now it's loaded into, into the project. And into the RAM of yeah, the... Yeah, into the RAM. Okay. Yeah, yeah, into the mm -hmm. RAM. Yeah, so I guess, I guess the samples are saved with the project then. I guess but the oh, no, RAM no. would erase. Uh, the RAM would erase yeah. exactly. The RAM erases when mm -hmm. you change the project. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So anything, anything that you haven't saved on the the actual drive, I don't know if it's possible to not save it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's in the RAM. So now we can go here. So track one. It's still the, it's still the default kick drum. So here under, we're under SRC source. Mm -hmm. okay. so that's your kind of starting point. So we have tuning. We have playing samples back and forth, bit reduction, then the sample slot, which selects the sample for the track. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Start and length. So basically, yeah, the right. sample. Uh, but you can also double click it or click it again. And you see, so we have the same controls, but we see the sample. Mm -hmm. So okay. here, if we change start value and length, we can now see that we've changed the positions. And the uh, um, names mm -hmm. here, they correspond to those? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so that's the lower four, that's the upper four knobs here. Exactly. So All we right. have tune, play, back and forth, mm -hmm. pitch reaction samples. So it's the same in both views. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's the same yeah, It's the same settings, but in yeah, different views. Looking at right. differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back and just make it as long. So say we want to change the sample. Then we use this knob here. They're very responsive. Um, so how do you know that? How do you mean? It's how I know that D. it's yeah. Yeah. So um, you see here one two three four one two three four. These icons represent the eight. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. It's I'm like, so, what? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just like wondering the yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Great question. This is a great question. So, okay, let, okay. Let, come closer. Come closer. Let, let, let's look here. Okay. So, what we have here, this is a really good question. So, what we have here are corresponding to the knobs. But these here are just informational. So, it's level, 
that's just the master level. Or oh, no, 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 it's the, uh, sorry, the track, the track level, that the track level here. Okay, now I get it. Yeah, so if I change to another track, oh. uh, we have a different track level, of course. And you can see that it's sample one, here's sample two, and sample three, and so on. But that's oh. a different sample. Different sample, sample, yeah, it's just that the, we're on the track, we're on sample track three. All right, three. and not MIDI track. Yeah, here, okay. let's see, here. So MIDI tracks are A, B, C. But here you can see, here's a good example. We're on a MIDI track now. Mm -hmm. We moved over to the MIDI track using a track button. When you mm -hmm. hit the track button, you can choose from MIDI tracks or sample channels. So mm -hmm. uh, here we have MIDI A. You can see here now, Stephen, here's a little quiz. Which of the knobs is not being used? We have eight knobs. We have eight things here. Which is not being used in this particular? Well. Which of the knobs? Seven have an X on them, so I'll say that this one is not being used. Exactly, correct. Even though X seems counterintuitive. <laughs> X. <Right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. What? So, with function and a press. Oh, the buttons we press. Yeah, they press. Oh. Give it a try. Hold function and just press a button. Oh, they press. What if you press without function? Yeah. Uh, nothing happens. How do you know? Why do we have to hold function? Big, good question, but it's it's actually very practical. Let's say let's say you're tweaking, mm -hmm. and you accidentally press it. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Then yeah. you then you basically f it up. Then okay. you then you turn off. So the excess mm -hmm. means that they are turned off. So you, for example, don't accidentally change the program value okay. of okay. something. All right. Yeah. How do you know that function would? affect that um well you yeah um, you have to, to read the manual <laughs> oh. <laughs> the biggest manual uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay, okay. or watch one of my videos for example uh might have a midi tutorial on, on the midi tracks for example okay i'm just promoting that mm -hmm. but yes it's a very good question but so there's a lot of these like double functions which you you, you just sure, don't know yeah. right. okay so let's go back to uh the sample channel mm -hmm. sorry you, you what did you do uh yeah track track Let's you you see when I hold yeah. track, it just lets you select the track oh, without okay. triggering it. Oh. Okay. So if I just oh if I just oh sorry um if I just do like this. Okay. I select the track, but it's audible. So if I'm playing something, oh. let's say here, let's say for example, um, I want to play something. And what the heck? Is yeah, going okay. on? So, yeah. So I want to play it's something. Noise. I want to play something, and I want to change the track at the same time. So I use track instead, so I don't trigger it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make oh, sense. Sure. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah, while playing, for example. So just to see a few things here, um, we want to select a different sample screen. Do you want to try mm -hmm. that? Yes, please. Select. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So and by you, pressing you this, I can listen. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, I see. So sam simple two was like sample two. Hmm. Gotcha. And you Look at that. Level. And now if you hold it down while turning it, mm -hmm. it'll jump to the next oh. page. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. To be like quick about it. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do you want here? Like, on a snare? Kick, like a kick drum, maybe? A kick drum. Yeah. Where do those samples come from? Is it just the folder loaded? Yeah, I loaded the folder. So this is also important. Oh, the... Okay. I'm, I'm reading it now. Now, now press yes. Okay, yeah. now I get it. So now, awesome. now, now we loaded, or not loaded, we just selected. The sample is already loaded into the project, but mm -hmm. we selected it for this particular track. Now you can see here, sample, to, sample channel 2, or track 2, but it's sample number 9. So I because assume... you picked the ninth sample? Yeah, it's ninth in, okay. in the row of gotcha. the samples loaded into RAM. Now we want to lay down some tricks. This is the, like the basic way of making music on Electron Gear. Okay. So uh, there are two ways. You can live record and you can step record. Mm -hmm. So if you just press the record button, please, Stephen. Now we have entered step recording. Do you want to do the honors and do like a foreign, foreign, foreign okay. floor beat? Yeah. Cool. So here's cool. the yeah, step sequence. <laughs> so it's just a 16 step sequence. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and the this because uh, you're on this track, no, you're on this sample. Yeah, I'm on the second track. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it like lights up on the pulse of where it's hitting. Yeah. 
can both see the movement, cool. but it's also like where it is. Yeah. Um, so let's go to uh, track track number three here. We're still at source. Can you select a sample, Stephen? Like a snare or something, sure. or hi hats, whatever you want. I can see that they mean like BD and yeah, yeah. And you can like also you can also play oh. while turning this knob. You can also hear the sound. Let's see. Uh, HT is hat. No, what? No, it's high tom. MT. Oh. MT. Oh, it's an M. What behind? Wow. Uh -huh. We're gonna pick a. No, we're gonna pick a high one. Nice. Yeah, and then you pick yes. Okay. So now we okay, selected. Cool. Um, so now you can press record. And you can just put down some steps where you want them. Oh. Ah, all right. Uh -huh. right. Record and play. Hey, this is fun. Yeah, so um, this is, of course, like very rudimentary how, how you actually get it to, to make some noises. And now we, we really have to That's talk cool. a little bit about the... the for anybody watching, like, yeah, okay, we've seen step sequence. There's what's so cool about electrons. Well, it's the parameter locking that really takes it to the next level. Okay. Parameter locking is just uh, a fancy way of saying that you you can you can store a parameter value per step. Mm -hmm. So you can sequence oh, the parameters. Oh, I see. You can sequence the parameters. Interesting. So, for example, we're on the hi hat track, obviously. Mm -hmm. So let me give me let me know like what could we do to make uh, the hi hats more uh, weird and exciting? Like give me a few ideas. You could tune them differently for each step. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do that. So we hold down a trig, a step, or, or, or it's a trig. So it's if it lights up, it means there's a trigger on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can just we see here tuning, and I just turn it. You see how it uh, gets a background? Mm -hmm. It means that it's locked. So if I let it go. The default for the track is still oh. the normal tuning, oh. mm -hmm. but for that step, it's tuned down. Okay. You want to try it? Just cool. Hold a step and and change the tuning. Yeah, you can. Can you see which steps are parameter locked or are like tuned now? No, we just uh, have not, to press not, not from this view here. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, but what are all these moving? Oh, maybe maybe you can. I'm not sure because well, okay okay yeah. What yeah, if I do this? Yeah. Oh, okay yeah. Okay, nice. yeah, okay, yeah, well, yeah, we figured yeah, something yeah, out. Yeah, that's cool. I, I, you know, I hadn't noticed that, really. Uh, I just thought, I thought my eyes were better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, that's cool. cool. And you, I think you can do, that's cool. I think you can do function. Yeah. So what I do oh, now wow. is if I hold function okay. and press a step, we can create a trig condition, but it won't, um, it won't have a note value. It won't, so it won't, it won't trigger. Sample? Yeah, it won't play the sample. Trig condition. Oh well, oh, trig condition. Well, like um, an empty trigger. Yeah, empty trig. Or, empty trig okay. is probably a better word. Yeah. Okay. So so it's 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 a trig, but it's not playing a note. That's oh, what I want to oh, say. Okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah. So for example, um, uh, yeah, you could do stuff with LFOs, for example, and yeah, very advanced stuff where you have like an LFO turning on and off, but not on an actual note. Okay. And so yeah. like. When there would be like a long decay from that note, yeah. well, that would go in here because there's no other note playing. Yeah. Then you could switch the yeah, effect you could, while you could, the decay yeah, is exactly. still yeah, sounding. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sound you like could, okay. Yeah, you, we could have a long decay on this one and then fade it out, for example. Okay, because I was wondering, okay. why would you have like yeah. an empty step? Yeah, it's it's okay. talking about so okay, it's yeah. like a relationship of time as well, like you're yeah, you you're you could yeah, you could program it that yeah. way anyway. But let's listen to it. That's just one thing you could lock. We could, of course, just have a quick look here. F FLTR, what do you think that is? Floater. <laughs> what? Oh, it's the... It's, the, well, the yeah. You know what those... You know when, the, when you go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first poop joke? Yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's obviously the filter. Yeah, so we've got uh, the filter oh, here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we have low, <laughs> like we have low pass and, and stuff like that. And, and you have an envelope envelope, a dedicated envelope for the filter. Mm -hmm. Now yet again, Steven, what do you think this button or this knob does if you look at the screen? Um, I'm, I hope it's the, I hope it's like the cutoff knob for frequency. Yeah, oh. exactly. Okay. You can read it. You can read the electron. Well, now so it yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So if I <laughs> oh, hold man. it down here, we can set the cutoff frequency differently oh, man. for, for each, uh, each note here. Of course, this is a hi-hat, so it will sound a little weird. And 
Of course, Felix. The second one here, what do you think it corresponds to? Uh, resonance, I'm yeah. pretty sure now. Yes, yes. So we can set the resonance differently as well per, per Does step. Does the filter self-oscillate as a modular guy? Um, I, That's important. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't think it does. All right. I'm not sure. Like, I don't hate me if, if I'm wrong here. I uh, don't think I've heard anybody talk about it doing it, and I've never tried. Okay. I see how it, how powerful it can be to quickly change things with the with a button and a movement. Hmm. And I know it's not always that easy, so yeah. that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And we can, of course, also, um, if we go to a new track here, we have a clap. Okay. And we just put down, or maybe we do, yeah, like this cowbell thingy, I don't know. We put down a few tricks, just mm -hmm. like we did before. And now we can, of course, do, um, we can do, we don't have to do step sequencing. We can, we can sequence parameter changes. Um, yeah, yeah, just do live, live recording. Real time. Okay. So you hold, you hold record and press play. You do it double tap. You do the double tap, it does the quantized, it changes to quantized okay. and unquantized recording, so you can do both. And is that track or global when you went into the quantized? Is that? Oh, uh, no, this is this is for this particular track. So you, oh. can, so you can do an unquantized re cool. recording. For example, if you have like a swing on some hi hats, now it's not mm -hmm. like infinite quantization, like it, um, there are still, if we look here on a trig, we can see that it's on a grid. You see the micro timings. Uh -huh. So there's still this like micro steps, but it's wow. very. Min, min, you see how, how, how you can do very. Uh, be, you can change it around a bit very quickly. Now I'm, I'm kind of doing it okay. pretty fastly because I yeah. think we're running out of time. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, basically you can do micro timings both like in the step mode, but you can also rec mm. record unquantized. Mm -hmm. But let's just say we want to. We want to live record a change. So say for the reverb, you'll just do like this. So suddenly we have these yellows indicating that there's something happening. All right. But it's not a note that it's triggering. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you can hear it. If you want to lengthen it, you hold function and page. And now we're in pattern mode, where we can just press this button here. You see it's 16, mm -hmm. or 16. Mm -hmm. oh. One, two, and now it's 64 steps. And it copies over the All data. Right. Mm -hmm. So you oh, can cool. see here, if I scroll, hit record, press page, just scroll through 1 to 16, yeah, 17 and onwards, and yeah. What do you have in terms of total length that you can be 64? Yeah, 64, but you can also do like different time division stuff and... Um, and you can also do, we won't have time to go into it, but you can do, um, well, I can just quickly show you. So, um, for example, if we go into the trig menu, so in the trig menu, we mm -hmm. see, for example, if I hold uh, a note here, mm -hmm. you can see that, yeah, it's C3, uh, there's no condition, and mm -hmm. I haven't programmed anything, but we could scroll here, it says cond, condition. So it's a condition for the trig. So we can set it to just play, say, 41% of the time. Okay. So sometimes it will be skipped. Okay. You can also oh. do you can also do like playing only one in one in every two and uh, mm -hmm. Okay. That's kind of cool. So that's that's kind of how you can build you can out of a 64 sequence, 64 step sequence, mm -hmm. you could build a very long melody okay. by having different trigs on different steps playing only under certain situations, only under mm -hmm. certain okay. conditions. So you have one sequence for each track, or can you have several different sequences per track that you can switch between, or can you even chain them together, like in um, a song? You can't, uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you can chain patterns. So we're on pattern number one, you can chain patterns together. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. But when we're on a track, so when we're on a, on a particular track, mm -hmm. that track plays the sample on that track, right. or, or yeah, that that's okay. what it does. It doesn't. Okay. You can't. You can't like uh, send it to any other track or mm -hmm. something like that. Not not without like workarounds. There All are right. some workarounds with external stuff, but and just to kind of go quickly over here. Uh, so this is we talked a little bit about the filter frequency resonance. You have different types of filters. You have uh, low pass and high pass, and you can turn it off. You have the envelope for the filter. So we get a really nice um, graphical representation here with an attack, uh, attack, decay, 
and yeah, I think it's a sustain and release, mm -hmm. and the filter. And you can also do, yeah, the envelope, of course, the in kind of intensity, you right? Know, uh, plus and uh, positive and negative. Okay. So you can do it like this, and we could just copy this trig here just to hear it. Wait, how do you copy? Oh yeah, so copy. You hold down uh, a trig, and you press the red one. It says copy under it. Hold down, press copy. Doesn't uh, that seem? Okay. Uh, I was I mean, thinking like orange. function, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought it would. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For for some for some in some situations you have to use function to copy other things. Uh, uh, but so, not, not but okay. not in the in, not in this view. Okay. So that's another thing. There are like these uh, weird differences of how you do it. So it's a little bit different. For example, if you want to copy a, a pattern, say, or mm -hmm. uh, I think if you're in pattern, and if I want to copy a pattern, I can't just hold. Like if I press record and I hold, so I'm in, in a pattern here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can. Uh, yeah. I can, yeah. I can oh, yeah. copy mm -hmm. pattern like, like that. Cool. Yeah. I don't think a quick question yeah, about sure. the trigger. Yeah. No, the, the the what was it? parameter lock? Mm -hmm. Can you parameter lock the sample? Yes, that's a really good question. Awesome. So so let's just listen to what we did with the uh, with the mm -hmm. filter. Yeah. yeah. It probably doesn't hear. <laughs> we don't hear it much, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's just do. It. I think this is a really good question as well. Um, so you can definitely parameter lock the sequence. I'm just going to turn this down to, to um, 16 steps so it's mm -hmm. a little easier to hear what's going on. Um, and we're on you. So, I'm oh, sorry. Um, so here we have this clave, I guess, or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's do a little pattern here. And let's say we want to use this track for mm -hmm. something more mm -hmm. than just this clave. Now, what we can do is we oh. can, um, so we have the clave rhythm, we have the clave rhythm here, and um, what, what, what else could we have running that doesn't occupy these steps? Like, right, can, okay, um, give me a snare drum. A snare drum, yeah, sure, sure. So we, we make a new trig here, and we hold it down, and we turn the sample button. And we'll just find a snare, SD. Booming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh. You see how it lights up? Mm -hmm. So now it's locked. Mm -hmm. okay. And now, oh, okay. and now of course, we don't have to do this again. We can just hold the step, copy, mm -hmm. and place it here. Okay, that's very cool. And yeah, now do that cool. thing. And so that leads me to the next question. We've got everything set up. We've got tons of parameter locks and sure. samples and tricks. How do we delete stuff specifically from it? Because when you're doing a live situation, I mean, while the thing is running, yeah. you add it, add it, add, and at some point everything is just getting too much and you want to reduce it again. Like mutes and things. Right. Yeah, so for example, we can just hold function. When we hold function, it turns green. It's from the basic layout here. Sure. And we're not in record mode or mm -hmm. anything. Okay. Hold function, turns green. This mutes the tracks. Hmm. Okay. So, uh -huh. turned off. So, so let's hear. You can also mm -hmm. do like global mutes. That 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 uh, uh, these. The, oh, sorry. This is a global mute. So if you go to another pattern and you've muted track one, oh, it will saying. stay muted. Okay. But there are also pattern specific mutes, but we'll not go into that right now. Mm -hmm. But there's pattern specifics that saves with the pattern mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and of course, if we just want to erase something, you can just simply do like this. Um, I guess the way I do it, like there's different ways to do mm -hmm. it. But let's say we want to we want to delete this one. What I did was I just uh, I just enabled um, the record mm -hmm. and I hit function and clear, function and clear, and you can do do it again and it undoes it. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. if you if you mess up, you have like one chance to do do a redo. So now I can for this specific the deletion I can. Yeah, clear and you can use that to take the part out for a bit. Although that would be similar to muting it, right? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, this is just if you mess up. Sure, okay. And, and right. you, oh, I deleted it. Oh, let's do mm -hmm. function clear again. Okay. So you use the same command. Right. But if I do something else, then it's lost. Can you specifically delete certain parameter locks? 
while it's running because that just clears the whole thing, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we have a. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's find. Uh, let's see. If we make a parameter lock here mm -hmm. uh, on this one, and I think if I press it, yeah. So if did you catch that, Stephen? Yeah. yeah. So I hold up and um, hold up um, a step here, mm -hmm. and I turn the bit reduction up, and I turn the bit reduction up over here. So let's let's play. You caught, caught that that I turned it off. Just pr hold the step, press press the knob, okay, and it turns it off. Like interesting, yeah. Forever, um, it's deleting. Yeah, it's deleting. The, I, I think okay. so. If I press it again, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, okay. it's gone. Like, right. Yeah, it doesn't save it. Yeah, it's those small things that you don't okay. really pay attention to that mm -hmm. much. But yeah. Oh, and um, yeah, um, the time is up now, guys. Ah, too bad. I've learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, I feel like comfortable. I, I could probably do something with that. Yeah, we've gone over how the sequence, the basic mm -hmm. functionality of the sequencer, mm -hmm. basically, and, and a few of the, the hidden features that, that makes it kind of interesting. Yeah. And now is a great time to grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, take a little bathroom break, maybe, and then you can get back and watch the second part of this lengthy tutorial with me, Bo Beats, Steven from Noir at Blank V and Felix from Tuesday Night Machines. So here we go. All right, so we are back after a little bit of a coffee break here with uh, Felix from uh, Tuesday Night Machines and Noir at Blank V, Steven. Thank you guys for joining me again. This is this is a, another day. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Different, different day, different sweater. Where's the, where's the shirt? Yeah, the shirt? I know. Um, the weather was better today, so I didn't need the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. You know, that was all like a mental back thing, from, right? Back from yeah, yeah, yeah. not Hawaii. Yeah. How are you, yeah. Feeling, how are you feeling today, Stephen? Uh, better. No rain. Well, now there is. Now there is. I wasn't. Somebody bring out the Hawaiian shirt. I know. Yeah. I, I need to bring that back. Yeah. yeah. So we sort of... Uh, left off here with these devices um, uh, kind of abruptly. Uh, so we thought we'd just continue this little tutorial, this super beginner friendly tutorial. And you guys, as always, just ask me all the questions. So we talked a bit about how to lay down trigs and stuff like that, how to uh, make like a basic beat. We talked about uh, changing samples and that sort of stuff. So I thought we'd start, we have synced the, the devices now, so we have three of them. So Steven, could you be so kind to lay down like a like a four on the floor beat on your device? Of course. Of course, yes. <laughs> Let's see here. So I'm gonna find my this third one. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I'm gonna go uh, Do you remember? Yeah, take it home. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go the No no no. You're good, you're good. You're in I'm step mode. Go this and that and this and that. And when I I am I'm controlling the setup, so super. That's awesome. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is like, could you just pitch shift, uh, say the last drum down a bit, just to create a variation? The last one? Yeah, sure. So I'm gonna go out of record. No. I'm gonna stay in record. Stay in record. I'm going to uh, hold it down. Hold function. No. <clears throat> Hold the trig, down. just hold the trig down. Hold the trig down. And fine tuning. Tune down. Super. Cool. So maybe a little bit too low. Do you see how it is in uh, um, tones, in, in notes, so note that, values? Yeah. An octave. Yeah, so it's quite sensitive when you mm -hmm. turn it, uh, but it also offers um, a lot of tuning possibilities for samples. Mm -hmm. um, so Felix, could you give us maybe a, maybe a hi-hat or something okay. on top of this? I think I've got one of those. Yeah. You, like you are not maybe. allowed, you're not allowed to use sample number seven. Oh. Because that's a preset sample. Oh, is it? And everybody has heard it so many times. Oh, crap, no. So you have to totally change, change You that. have to change it. So uh, hi-hat. Which also leads us into how to change it. So. Yeah, we're on the source page, and Felix is scrolling through the topic. You can just pick whatever you want. I loaded too many, I think. Ah, but Okay, there that. we go. And yeah. press yes. Yes, okay. So, um... Soup. 
And now perhaps we could show the retrig setting. Okay. What's so that? this is something cool. You can you can follow along on your end as well, Stephen. Mm -hmm. So if you just hold down the last trig and press the up key, we access the retrig menu. So you see here, there's a little on and off switch. Do you mm -hmm. see it, Stephen, as well? Yeah. The, the one, the black little dot there mm -hmm. says zero. If you press up again, you can press up again as well. Yes. Yeah. You see, now it's enabled. And oh, if you, okay. yeah. So using the keys here, oh, sorry. Well, I still have to hold it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so now using up and down arrows, okay. you set the rate. And then you have length and velocity as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. you can try and just set it to a retrig value on each device that you mm -hmm. enjoy, uh, that you think will sound okay. And how would you change the length and velocity? So we have length here and velocity here. Mm -hmm. And you can see it corresponds clearly to D and H. So you use D and H. Oh, all right. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the, these two, D and H. Oh, and H. I, I was like, what is that? Oops. Yeah, that so was C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Length. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. Longer. So we... Okay, yeah, we're going crazy here. <laughs> okay. okay, let's try. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, we got something here. <laughs> now, what we could do, if you remember, do you remember... So these are retrigs. They are mm, okay. per, per, per step. Mm -hmm. So you can set them. Did you do you remember what we talked about earlier about the conditions? So you can have a trig like this here, for example, only occur a certain percentage of the time. Did we talk about that? Uh, I think we did Briefly. about chance at least, all right? Yeah. So okay. if you, for example, put down a new trig here and you hold it down, go to trig page. We're on the trig page. Mm -hmm. And you look up cond condition. Mm -hmm. And you see here as we can uh, choose different settings. So we won't go into detail what these different settings do because it, it's in the manual and it's a little bit complicated and takes a long time to explain everyone. But we could set this one oh, here at, for example, a certain percentage. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as we heard with Steven's beat, we have a retrig on the, on the first kick. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little weird, but what if, what if we create a condition a condition that this um, second kick will only play if the first one does not play. Okay, well, that... Now we're... Okay, <laughs> sounding mental. Am I losing you? No, no yeah. but it sounds complex okay. and wild. So, so we have... I'm holding down this trig here. Mm -hmm. You can just follow along. Now, the first thing I need to do is I want a kick on... I always want a kick on the first beat. Mm -hmm. I mean, having it on the second step would sound weird. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this micro timing. I think we've already mm -hmm. touched a little on it that we can change the timing of the oh, tree. Well. So I'm moving it all the way to the left, making it sound almost like it's on the first step. Okay. Yeah. So that that doesn't work if both of them are playing. Of course, it'll sound maybe maybe it sound good, but probably not. Mm -hmm. So next up. We want this to play when this one is not. So if I set the first one to a percentage, the first trig is now only triggering a percentage of the time. So you have 25% mm -hmm. on your unit and we have 59 here, Stephen. Mm -hmm. So this with the, the retrig enabled only triggers 59% of the time, which means when it's not triggering, this one will trigger the second one because we chose an option called pre. Mm. So the pre option, there are two variations. You have pre and you have pre without the little dash above it. And I think, and I hope, I hope I'm not wrong now because this is like the binary thing. I often get wrong which one is which, but I think it's when it's the, the little um, line above it, it means when, when the previous note uh, is not playing its place, but I could mm -hmm. be wrong here. Let's let's hope I'm not. But let's let let's see. Okay. 
So okay, suddenly, okay. so we okay. can decrease the percentage. So for those at home that didn't understand this, this first trick has a 33% chance now to trigger, to do the brrr, drum kick. The second trigger only triggers a normal boom kick sound if the first one does not trigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you made it sound very early by changing the micro timing. Exactly. Okay. So it's almost I like see. it's on the same step. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I see. So you see we have 64 steps total. Mm -hmm. But mm. since we could do, let's say we have a melody that's always, you know, on the beat here. Mm -hmm. We could always do a second, like second row of trigs and just shift them and change, say, say you change it so first time around it plays the first trigs and mm -hmm. the second time around it plays the second trigs. Okay. That way we have 128 steps. Okay. Because you play the same 64 steps two times, but first time it's only these trigs and second time it's only these trigs. Okay. But didn't you divide it by two? Don't you have to divide it by two then? Because though the second one and when the, the first will never second, play right yeah no because um uh, um you oh, you can you can you can set it to a condition so you can set it to a condition that it only plays um one out of two so it mm -hmm. means it will only play for example if we set this here to one to two here you can hear in instantaneously you will hear what happens let's listen These only trigger every other time. Right. So hmm. if you set the first ones to trigger the first mm -hmm. playthrough, you set the second ones to play the second playthrough, okay. you can yeah. effectively create a longer pattern with, a, say, a melody of 128 steps. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a little, it, it is a little uh, complicated, but it's doable. You can do it this way. Uh, maybe I can show you a little in more, more detail. But let's remove. The trig, do you, do you remember, Felix, how, how to remove the trig condition? Mm, uh, yeah, clear, that was like the no, weird no, no, thing. No, 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 uh, no, 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 clear, clear removes everything. Uh, uh, if you have a trig condition... I know. Uh, you click the button. Yes, oh, yes, okay. on which button is it? Yeah. Well, this is the one over Yeah, yeah, button. for sure. Good, yeah. awesome. Oh, that too. That's awesome, super. And guys, this is like uh, Steven's first try with Electron, and it's like... <laughs> a day after we shot the first thing, so it's awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, great. So we have our little bit here. Um, next up, let's talk a little bit about, um, I think, uh, the amp section. So if everybody goes into the amp section. Um, so of course you see on the top row, you should always think about it, like two rows. Two rows of two knobs. Oh, sorry. Of knobs. Of knobs yes. And two rows here on the screen. Uh, oh, okay, yes, of course. It corresponds. Yeah. So we have four thing mm. down here, four thing up here. Now, um, for example, I have a sample. Let's see here. That sample. Now, to make it more exciting, I can add reverb. So, um, I just now I'm on that track, track number one. I increase uh, the reverb with the F button. And you can try and re increase the reverb on some of your tricks if you want to. But Just are you? Hold. Yeah, hit record. You, no, oh, you, I need uh, to be in record. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, I, I jump ahead. So now you're increasing uh, for everything for yeah. the entire track. Okay. Yeah. So for, since you have drum, uh, that's a good good lesson to learn. Uh, I'm increasing for every for the entire track mm -hmm. because it's a it's a sound that sounds good with reverb. But if we you know we don't want reverb sure. on every kick. So maybe Stephen, if you hit record. And you, you do reverb on the second. So if we remove all the reverb from the track, you do reverb on the last one. And then you just increase. Oops, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we well, parameter lock. Thing it. fills up. Yeah. And now, oh, while we're here. Oh, what, okay. Yeah, while we're here, hold it down. You go into uh, filter. We can do another cool thing. You see the type? Yes. Yeah. It's the G. Yep. G knob. If you scroll through it, and find the high pass, yeah. and yeah, yeah, turn down the frequency a bit. It's oh wait, uh, oh wait, okay, that's that. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, this. Yeah. Gotcha. So now we have uh, a low cut mm -hmm. with reverb on the last trick. Mm -hmm. cool. 
And okay. how could you audition this while you're tweaking the knobs? Ah, uh, just hit hit the. Yeah, now you have to redo it. Oh shit! <laughs> no problem. No, yeah, hold on again. We can use it quickly. I think it was a very nice uh, little touch. Okay, that. And that. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, yeah. to to audition, yeah. you either have to have okay. stuff playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have the sequence playing and you're in record mode and you're adding stuff and uh, and uh, it, you will hear mm -hmm. the effect, or you have to hit hit right. the track. What did I do? Oh, so Stephen, you move to the MIDI tracks. These are how the MIDI did tracks. I? Yeah, you're just moving through the tracks. Okay. Because you're not in a record mode. In a record mode, you're always on one track, and when you're Um, so, um, for example, for my little synth sound, I might want to have a longer tail. So you hold, uh, you can follow along. You hold down function, and guess what button we are pressing now to ga gain access to the reverb. The reverb? Yeah, we want to access the settings for the reverb. So we're on the amp page still, mm -hmm. but now we want to access the reverb. So ah, so amp. yeah. Correct. Oh, it changes colors. Yeah. Mm. So we okay. can let go. We can let go. Now we are on this. Mm. This this is a send effect. So okay. It's the same settings for its global settings. So you send. You can send the individual tracks to the send effect, of mm -hmm. course. Okay. So now we can change. You can you can see here we have pre pre delay decay. So I'm gonna have a really long decay. You can just mm -hmm. do whatever you feel like. You can also do shelving and you can do a low cut and and high pass. rather yeah a high cut and a low cut so for example here see you can cut the frequency of the reverb like okay. this so if you want a little muffled reverb or if you want a, like like a very brittle reverb okay cool um, yeah so we'll not go into super detail about what all of this does but mm -hmm. uh, we have the settings here so now we have something so if I put down a, a trig here on number one uh, for the for the little pad uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. So I'm going to have, uh, I want to do a condition here. So I'm going to do one in two for this trig, copy it, and two, two. So first time around, it'll play the first one. Second time around, it'll play the second one. Changing the micro timing. So both are triggering on the first step, basically. Okay. Now, for example, we have the same note. So this is C3. And you know we could do maybe uh, I don't know an E. I think my question is why would you do that? Only? Oh, um, it, it's not so much that it's practical. You, the most practical thing would simply be to be doing this instead function page and just yeah. do do 64 steps yeah. and then we do sorry then we um, um, and then we just put down uh, it has copied the trig over mm -hmm. yeah and, and, and then we'll just change the trig, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. that would be the most practical it's a really good question so basically what I wanted to show you was simply the the functionality of having these trig oh, conditions okay. is really vast mm -hmm. in the sense that you can create very evolving melodically changing things uh, depending on how you use these trig conditions i understand sort okay. of now when now when you say certain things about steps you can you can almost have more resolution in where you can make steps happen with the re-trigger you can make a for sure something that would take you many more steps you yeah yeah one re-trigger step for sure, for sure. So, so for some things it's practical, yeah. for others it's not. Okay, so that's the reverb. We also have the delay. If you go back, you just press the amp again. And we have the delay. So it's oh. just an increase of, of the send. Mm -hmm. So uh, for your tracks, I would suggest go into the track and place, use it, do, do a lock. So if you turn it down, for otherwise it's all over the kick drum. Okay. So maybe, Steven, if you pick another sound. Yeah, just see what you got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, see if we can find something that matches, like a perk or something. Like a perk or something. We could do um, this one here. Tune it up a bit. And if you try and just increase the reverb. On just this yeah, yeah, one? Sure. Yeah, sure. Just to increase it. Oops. And the delay. Ooh. More delay. Yeah, super. So That's maybe if you, yeah, maybe if you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if you place down a trig somewhere, just, uh, yeah. Did he want Oh, place down a trig of that? Yeah, yeah. Just hit record and place a trig. Yeah, something like that. And you've done something on your end as well? Yes, well, I've I done looking. two parameter locks similarly. Yeah, awesome. Super cool. If I want to, I could easily turn this one sound into, say, something shorter and plucky. We're in the amp, I'm just changing the envelope. Maybe we do reverse. Oh, maybe not. Uh, So what I did there is just adding a bit of bit reduction, so mm -hmm. you have a bit reduction under source as well. Where does the keyboard come from? So the keyboard comes from, so we're on a track, whatever track, mm -hmm. all tracks, even MIDI tracks, you have function and track. Okay. Ah, versus uh, chromatic, uh, okay, uh, sure. So if That's you're- yeah. easy. Yeah, function, you can try. Now it's important, if you want to turn it off, you have to do it again. Mm -hmm. So we are back to normal. Um, so you could of course play something, like an hour, I don't know the pitches of stuff here, so it'll probably sound like ho totally horrible. But you can also go up in octave, oh. arrows, arrows up, in chromatic mode. Mm -hmm. If you go in, oh. in chromatic mode, press arrow up to go up in octaves. Um, okay, so I see it Plus says 12. It. So it's just okay. up an octave. Mm -hmm. So quite out of tune in the sense that this sample isn't tuned mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. So if we'd had the time, what I would do now, next is just let it run, and I would use the tuning to tune the melody. Okay. Because I think I was sort of close to something that could sound good, but it's the original sample is not tuned. Right. In the so same pitch. what you just recorded would record parameter locks, but in a different way for pitch. Mm, yeah. Or how does that work? Uh, no, it, it's notes, note values. So it it um, is different. So the tuning, uh, the tuning is one parameter, mm -hmm. uh, and the trig uh, has different note values. Ah, okay. So I'm not. I don't want to get into like how tech, how it relates to one another. But uh, um, to say is like if we listen to it, we can without changing the notes that we played, the mm -hmm. sort of MIDI notes we can change the, the tuning. Uh, but I'm not uh, guaranteeing anybody at home that this will sound good. Horrible. It's all shit. Oh, and here, now we can get into the LFO. So you have the LFO over here. Okay. If you press it. Now, we don't have time to go into all the minutiae. This is very complicated, mm -hmm. or not very complicated, but it's there's a lot of things going on. Uh, the two main things to think about here is you have destination and depth. Mm -hmm. You find them, Stephen? Yep. Um, so if you scroll through destination, you see all the possible destination of the one LFO per track. So for this sound that I'm making, I want frequency. So see, guys, if you can find frequency Wait. as well on um, your end. So, oh, there it goes. Sorry. Yeah, so if you use this knob here, oh, oh, I'm you can see. Frequency in here. So you see, first is a sample. This means that it's from mm -hmm. this, it's sample related stuff, and then it's filled, so it's mm -hmm. filter related. So try and find the filter and mm -hmm. press yes. Now we selected it, 
and now we can change the depth. It goes from yeah negative sixty four to positive sixty four mm -hmm. or sixty three. So for just for my sound here, you can obviously hear that it comes into effect when I'm playing. And of course, if I actually change, if I change the filter, uh, you will hear it more noticeably. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit of an envelope to filter here. So now I could be, I could just lay down a few trigs since I know sort of what what we were um, playing in uh, the the, the uh, we we're playing C, we we're playing uh, E, and we we're playing. Uh, I think it was uh, F, no, no, G, I think. So suddenly we have a little synth mm -hmm. sound going there. Mm -hmm. Kind of where are you guys at in this process? Like what, what, what is like rumbling in your head? I think there was, there was some holes from yesterday only because I was trying to remember mm -hmm. exactly when to hold things, when to click things, mm -hmm. when we're talking about where the tracks sure. and sounds are. Because um, I guess that's kind of the most important. If you, yeah, if you yeah, can't make something sure, start, sure. you can't really work with the sounds. So I think now I get that a little bit better. Yeah. So if you were just to show us, like if you just want to lay down a couple of tricks, what would you do? Then I press the record and then I could put them Sure. Wherever I wanted to put them, and then like I could, if I wanted to change something, I can hold the thing, the button, and then I can change. Well, I can. I want to pick maybe something. So like I could do the amp or something, or sure. I could the filter, and I could like change something on the filter, or do something like that. I don't know. And then yeah, now it's changed. Yeah, exactly. That's and that's completely thinking. correctly. Yeah. And how about you, Felix? Like. Um, it's it seems very very powerful I yeah. think mm -hmm. um, but also probably very geared to preparation right mm -hmm. before a session yeah yeah I mean mm -hmm. I'm sure you there are like a bunch of tricks to be m very mm -hmm. like live yeah, capable sure, with a thing sure. or like uh, yeah um, so yeah let's touch on that that's a good one let's touch on just one last thing before we end today mm -hmm. that's the control all feature control mm -hmm. all means that you control all the tracks when you okay. do a parameter change. Yep. Yeah. Where is it? Where <laughs> yeah, is it? Can you find it? Can uh, you find it? Okay, guys, so hold uh, the three I'm gonna go and grab, at the same time. I'm going to go then... and grab a coffee <laughs> yeah. and you guys can I know, you do, nah, you do yeah. the whole palm. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> turn it off. It's going to be fast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have this thing going here. Which sounds weird, but okay. We can still make it work. Uh, by doing funny parameter locks uh, or funny uh, control all I mean so one thing we uh, you have the track button yep. but first we need to do something hold function and press yes oh, save yeah this mm -hmm. saves the current yeah that's that's good it pattern saved to temp area this saves the pattern to a temporary area so it's mm -hmm. not saved like indefinitely it's mm -hmm. just saved to the temporary area mm -hmm. now if we hold function don't do it but if you hold function <laughs> <don't, don't, laughs> we don't do it now <laughs> hold function and you press no you revert back to mm -hmm. the saved state so let's say we want a gig oh. so we're playing you know playing here and we want to do some cool shit that's kind of cool uh, you can have a sequence running and you can do uh, control all you hold down track so when you hold down track and you make any change, it mm -hmm. applies to all the channels. So let me just show you by okay. pitching down this entire in, entire melodic thing. Okay. So yeah. So now it's of course now it's pitched down. But then I just do function no, and the, the pattern is reloaded mm -hmm. instantly. So you can add a little bit of variation for a bit yeah. of a live show and exactly. then just undo it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I like is just to do here now, just, just, we'll just let this play. Mm -hmm. You guys do track and, and change whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And whenever you feel like, yeah, I, I want to revert, just press function and no. You don't have to save again. The, mm -hmm. the temp save is still okay. there for next time. So, okay. so you never, never function yes. That, that's the thing. It's <laughs> yeah. very easy to miss it. <laughs> But okay, let's, okay, let's okay. do it. Let's do it.
get into it. Yeah. That's cool. So just to kind of wrap it up a little bit. Uh, so some things that this enables you to do is, for example, if I reload your pattern here, Stephen, mm -hmm. uh, you can do very basic stuff like, say, low cut, add a lot mm -hmm. of reverb, and then just revert back. So, for example, let's try and do that. Let me just show you. So you could easily do like a breakdown type mm -hmm. of thing, or you could just do even crazier stuff like like pitching it down. Mm -hmm. And this is of course something you could do if you connect a, a MIDI controller as well to it. Ah. So you could, so you could you could control. You don't need you don't actually need like uh, the control all feature. If you have like an external MIDI controller, you could just set it up to send to all the tracks, and you'll basically have like control all. But mm -hmm. you might might have access to the reverb and delay from from the controller. But can as well. you control the Digitech like externally? Like yeah. is like the save and reload pattern? Uh, Are those no, MIDI I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I don't dare okay. say. Like I don't think so. But yeah. Okay. So guys, uh, any final like questions about it? I mean, I could make something on this today, and I couldn't, this is, you know, what, been like an hour and something yeah. over the course of two days. So, yeah, I feel confident that I can, that I can do it. That's awesome. That was what I wanted to kind of achieve. I know, Stephen, you've said, like, it's, it's, it's difficult and you had a hard time wrapping your... Yes, I never, around. I never yeah. touched one, just... So everyone knows I've never done anything like that. Yeah, it's awesome. And how about you, Felix? I'm wondering because this is this seemed very easy to do, right? Yeah, it, it seemed. It mm -hmm. didn't require a lot of um, explanation. I'm just wondering what the electron workflow actually is that people find so difficult, or that I also found difficult. Yeah, yeah. For years. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, this device is quite user-friendly because it's more graphical mm -hmm. and it has a very straightforward logic. There's less going on. There's always like the eight things. Look for the eight, eight okay. <laughs> uh, sort of uh, wording here mm -hmm. corresponding to the eight knobs. So that's one thing okay. that makes it easier. Uh, also, the like the larger display makes it more clear what's going on. So I think I think that the Digitech is like the, the, the perfect entry machine if you really want to go into it. Now, there's also mm -hmm. the model samples, but it's a little mm -hmm. bit more, um, it's a little bit uh, different. Okay. So this is probably easier. So I think uh, there's a difference between this device and say the, the other ones like, like Analog uh, 4, mm -hmm. and th those are a little bit more complicated, but it's the same basic setup. Like if you know mm -hmm. this, it's pretty easy to then go over to something else. Okay for sure but guys uh thank you so much for joining me in this adventure and oh. for indulging me and yeah. listening to me talk no cool thanks no, for the I, lesson i mean yeah i learned something that's great awesome thank you so much cool thank you Stephen. Thanks, bro. thank you for this and always go and check these guys out on their respective channels link down below thank you so much for being here talk to you later and if you made it this far wow congratulations you you completed the Electron beginner course. Now, if you like these kind of videos, be sure to check out patreon.com slash bowbeats. All the help and support I can get there is much appreciated. Thank you.